And we're back. Imagine if you were roaming the hills and valleys of the Holy Land, let's say 3,000 years ago or so. Imagine what you'd see. Imagine the scene, the shepherds tending their flocks, the farmers camped out in their fields. And imagine the sounds, the chirping of the birds, the rustle of the wind in the leaves. And sounds like this. The sounds of the Harp of David being played by Shoshana Harari. And she's here along with her husband, Micha, not only husband and wife, but fellow harp makers. And these are really the harps of David, the harps of olden days, are they? These are uh, replicas, as far as we can tell, of the harps that were played in the time of King David, the time of the Temple, the prophets, just about everyone. It was the national instrument of Israel. The national instrument. It's a beautiful sound indeed. Is this the joyous noise that was made unto the Lord, perhaps? Hopefully. Uh, we don't know the music that was actually played, but uh, the, the notes are written in the Bible. And one thing that we do know is that these instruments were played from the heart the way David did. Uh, you, when you wanted to play your instrument, you sat down and you expressed the innermost feelings through the strings. Micha had said that uh, David, the young David, played his harp in order to soothe the frazzled nervous system of King Saul, who was evidently emotionally in a corner here and there. It's, is it also true that he composed his psalms uh, playing them on the harp? Yes, there's a midrash that says that um, he would leave his harp hanging on a tree outside of his tent at night and at midnight the north wind would come up and it would begin to play the harp and it would wake him up he would take his harp and he would play music unto God and uh, continue to write the psalms this is the kind of harp he played what might it have sounded like That's definitely a more ancient kind of sound in terms of tonality and scales than what we heard from the other harp before. Was the music of ancient days a little less harmonious, a little more dissonant than what we're familiar with today? Well, to tell you the truth, we have no idea what kind of music they played. Um, the, uh, the, what we do know, which actually came when we started to make this kinur, is that the music of the future will be radically different from the music of the past. It will be based on a ten-note scale instead of the octave, which is what we have now, and it will reflect the kind of life that we will have then when there will really be, you know, God willing, no more war, no more fear, no more pain or sorrow. Interesting. But way back when, when there still were, there was war and plenty of <laughs> sorrow, you were telling me earlier that there were something like 4,000 harps in the ancient Jewish temple. Well, we do know that there were 4,000 Levites in the temple, and they were all trained from a very early age, probably three, to play the harp, to play both of them. This one is called the Neville, and this one is known as the Kinur in the Bible. And on the big holidays, the three major holidays, there were so many harps played that they could be heard in Jericho. That's quite a distance away. In fact, the holiday we're celebrating now, uh, Shavuot, was one of those holidays when Jews from all over were commanded to make a pilgrimage to Jerusalem. So they would have heard these sounds as they came to Jerusalem? As far as it's written, yeah. Interesting. Now, these harps, are they strictly collector's items, curiosities, or are they making a comeback as instruments to be purchased and performed on? Well, most of the reason that these harps have, are purchased and kept in the people's homes and played by just about the ones, everyone who bought it, I think is connected with the fact that these are the first harps to return after 2,000 years. Our ancestors hung them on the willow trees when they went into exile because they were instruments of joy. And the fact they've returned is a very important factor to the people who buy them because they are wanting to make, as you said, a joyful noise unto the Lord. A symbol of joy and also a symbol of what the Harari family has been doing in Israel for the last nine years or so of harp making here. And if you'd like more information about these harps, uh, write to us here at Jerusalem Online. You remember the address, P.O.B. 33003. That's 33003 in Jerusalem, and we'll send you the information you want about David's harps. Meanwhile, Shoshana and Micha Harari, harp makers to the world, David, harp makers to the world, thanks for joining us today. Well, that sounds suspiciously like the end of this week's look and the listen at the people and the stories behind the news from Israel. You've been watching Jerusalem Online. I'm Mike Greenspan. Join me again next week. Shalom.